educational giant William, William Hurd Kilpatrick. Quote, the learner's attitude is thus a essential factor to determine the direction whether he shall learn to do or not learn to do. End of quote by William Hurd Kilpatrick. William Hurd Kilpatrick was born on the 20th of November, 1871, in the middle school town of White Plains, Georgia. He was educated in local village schools while growing up, and at age 17, in eight, year 1888, he entered into Mercer University in Macon, Georgia. Learning came easy to Kilpatrick, as fellow teachers and fellow students described him as a brilliant and wonderful boy himself, especially in mathematics wherein he excelled. Following his graduation from Mercer, he went straight to John Hopkins, located in, located in Maryland. While attending, he discovered that he had a, long, a great desire to teach mathematics and sciences. After failing to acquire an assistantship position at Mercer University as he hoped he would, post-graduation of Johns Hopkins, he then accepted a position at a combined elementary secondary education school in Blakely, Georgia as a co-principal and teacher of mathematics and Latin to grades 7th through 10th. Thus began his teaching career. Furthermore, in the following year, Kilpatrick's fascination and study of the progressive education began to bloom. While attending summer school at Ross College in Athens, Kilpatrick was exposed to the study of pedagogy, a method of teaching used in an academic subject or theoretical concept. He then attended a lecture given by Colonel Francis Parker, said to be the father of progressive education himself. Kilpatrick was utterly captivated by him and his philosophies, and he soon began to implement Colonel Parker's methods within his own teachings while at Blakely. Later in Kilpatrick's life, President Mercer of University, uh, President of Mercer University offered Kilpatrick a position a professor, as professor and chairman of mathematics. He accepted out of duty and family tradition. He was only 29 years old at this time and was already incredibly successful, even in today's standards. During his time at Mercer, he married Marie Berman Guyton on December 27, 1898. They had three children, though two died in infancy, until Mary herself died of tuberculosis. Kilpatrick would marry two more times during his lifetime. First, secondly, to Margaret Mungald Pinckney in 1908, and to Marion Ostrander in 1940. Nevertheless, Kilpatrick, Kilpatrick left Mercer and returned to Columbus, Georgia due to his unorthodox, unorthodox views, taking position as a mathematics teacher and high school principal. In 1898, he attended summer school at the University of Chicago, where he met one of his professors, John Dewey, who would later claim Kilpatrick to be the best student he's ever had. Through Dewey's teachings, Kilpatrick found a new calling in education. The Light of Progressive Influence in Education In July of 1918, Kilpatrick published in the Teacher's College Record an 18-page article, The Project Method, The Use of Purposeful Act in the Educational Process which applied his educational philosophy to classroom teachings. The method explains that where the interests of the child should be at the center of the project, purposeful, purposeful learning becomes the motivation. Children are people who should be actively engaged in efforts to comprehend and become more skillful in the world they live in. Someday they will become the leaders and engineers of the world in which we live. Students should learn to practice, to work together, to think abstractly, to participate, to develop their moral responsibility. Additionally, apart from his writings, Kilpatrick had a profound influence in American education that was attributed in large to 
His extraordinary skill as a teacher and lecturer, Kilpatrick's excellence as a teacher spread quickly, and he became a sought-after teacher and lecturer. Through his increasing popularity, he gained national platform, for which he shared his ideas about student-centered democratic education. Kilpatrick's final class was in 1937, consisting of 622 students. After which he retired, though he was legally retired, Kilpatrick, ne Kilpatrick never ceased to be part of progressive movements in education. He still remained a proud speaker and leader of it. Kilpatrick then died at age 93 on February 13, 1965 in New York City. Up to the present time, progressive education methods have been continually implemented within school settings. Kilpatrick's teaching said children need to be actively engaged within school, within the school, developing comprehension skills and skills that are needed for their world that they live in. School is part of life, not preparation for life. Classrooms should be led by a democracy. Teachers should be facilitators, not dictators of learning through decision-making shared by those present. The acquiring of knowledge is constructed through play, direct experience, and social interaction. Kilpatrick studied, practiced, and encouraged progressive methods in education with passionate rigor to change traditional views. I personally wholeheartedly agree with Kilpatrick's progressive views toward education within the classroom setting and atmosphere. Though like little energizer bunnies, children seem to have endless supply of get up and go energy themselves. I've noticed through opportunities with teaching young children myself that it's extremely difficult for them to sit in a chair, keep still and attentive, and remain quiet until unless called upon. The technique doesn't even work with adults, let alone children. By coming to a greater understanding of William Hurd Kilpatrick, I've introduced I've been introduced to progressive education, what it comp what it comprises of, to appreciate Kilpatrick's involvement in the movement of education history. Being being introduced to his teachings and accomplishments and contributions, I completely agree with his teachings and encouragement of progressive methods. It allows children to be participants, problem solvers, planners, developing skills through teaching the activities presented to discuss and acted upon within the classroom settings. William Hurd assisted in bringing about a new wave of change into classrooms, teaching and teachings, more freedom for children to develop into who they can be, the leaders of the next generation, learning to love learning. Thank you.